Mordechai and Shaul Melech, Esther and Sarah Yimenu. We know that there is an obvious connection between Mordechai at Tzadik and Shaul Melech. Ish Yehudi Hoya Veshushan Abira, Ushmoi Mordechai Ben Shimim Ben Yor Ben Kish, Ish Yimini. Mordechai, a Yehudi, is called a Yehudi. First question is, why? Davka is Mordechai, that's not called a Yehudi. We're all Yehudim. Why is he called a Yehudi? But then the Megillah goes on to trace his lineage, and he's a descendant of Shaul Melech. Mordechai was a direct descendant of Shaul Melech. But curiously enough, when the Megillah traces this lineage, it skips over Shaul Melech and says, Ben Kish, Ish Yemini, from the Shevet of Binyamin. Now we know that Shaul Melech was Shaul Ben Kish. If we're tracing the lineage of Mordechai at Tzadik, one would think that the obvious connection would be to Shaul Melech, his descendant of Shaul Melech. And it goes all the way down the line with the lineage. And it goes even past Shaul, and it goes to Shaul's father, and it skips over Shaul and Melech. Why? Why is that? So why is Mordechai, of all of the great Yidin in Tanakh, why is Mordechai called Yehudi, Davke Mordechai? And why is his lineage, why is it skips over Shaul and Melech? We know the Medrash says that Mordechai was like a bechin of a melech. He was like a king. He himself was like a king. He was zeichet to the tachsise malucha. After the nais of Purim, he was like a melech. He ruled. He was like a melech. And Esther, a malka, she was a malka. She ruled. She was a malka. There's a fascinating Medrash that says as follows. Rabbi Kiva was teaching the Talmidim. Hoya Rabbi Kiva, Roya Talmidim is Namnim. He saw that the Talmidim were dozing, so to speak. The Talmidim were dozing. Rabbi Kish Loyerim, he wanted to awaken them. So he asked them the question with what, how was Esther Zaycha, what was the schools that she was Zaycha? But Mezach Esther Limlai Chalmeve Esther Meshev Medinais. How was she Zaycha to rule over 127 Medinas? That lived 127 years. Dover Pella. So Dover Pella. Esther was Zaycha because Sari men lived 127 years? What's the connection between the life of Sarah that she happened to live 127 years and Esther and Malka ruled over 127 Medinas? And why are we connecting Esther, Malka, Dafka, the Sori, Men? What about the other Imois? What about the other Hanoshim Tzikonias throughout, throughout the history? What, what, what's the connection, Dafka, between Esther and Sori, Menu? And the 127, 127. And why is the Medrash telling us that Rabbi Kiva's Talmud were dozing? Why is that important to know? And why were they dozing? And why was he ma'ayra them dafka with this nakuda, with this point? So what's the ending here? So let's examine Sari Men. We know in Chayasara, the parasha says that Sari Men lived for 127 years. Elu This was, these were the years of Sari Menu. And Rashi brings down the Medrash, it says, Kulen Shom Lutev. They were all equally good. They're all wonderful, equally wonderful years, 127 years. And we know, of course, that Sari Emanu, Emanu suffered through many nisyanas through her life. She had many, many nisyanas through her life. She didn't have children. She had poverty. There was a raw varets. She had the nisyanas of Avram Avinu. Parcha Nishmas about the news of the Akeda. Why? What do you mean, Shkul Nisham we know there's a parish in the Torah that's named after Sari Menu. Dafka Sari Menu. She's the only one that has a parish named after. Why Dafka Sari Menu? 
And Sari Amin is the only one that the Torah delineates the exact number of years of her life. Why is that? Zayir says, because Sari Amin, she was a tsenua. She was Meiser Nefesh Ritzniyas. She was the most beautiful woman in the world. And she was taken to the house of Para. Uh, Parai, uh, she was taken to Mitzrayim, a land of Zima, and she withstood the trials and tribulations, and she was at Sanu in a time, in a land of Znus, of Zima, the most beautiful woman in the world, the most coveted woman in the world, and she was at Sanu. And that's why the Torah mentions that her years and that's why the parish in the Torah is named after Sari Menu, because she was a Tsunu. And of course, all of the Noshim Tzitkonis were Tsunuis, all the Moyes were Tsunuis. But she was the source of Tsunuis. She was the aside of Tsunuis. She was the mother, Sari Menu, from whom all of the other Noshim Tzitkonis drew the example and drew the source and the Makor for Tznius and the source and the Makor for being Aymed Benisoyan, for withstanding the tests, to go against the tide, to fight, fight for the principles, to withstand the temptations, to be Meiser Nefesh, to go against the flow. She had that Bechina. And that is the Bechina of Malchus. The Bechina of Malchus is to stand above, to rise above, to rise above the masses, to go against the flow, to withstand the temptations, to rise above. That's the Bechina of Malchus. And that's what Sora Imenu had. And Esther Amalka. She was a Malka. She had the Bechina of Malchus. She had the characteristic of Malchus. She was the most beautiful woman in the land, the most coveted, coveted by Achashverosh, brought into the palace of Znus, of Zima, in a time, in a place where it was Moli Zima. Vashti was Moli Znus and Zima. And she was Esther Hamalka the Tznua the meat of Tznius, withstanding all of this, being Meiser Nefesh, being Meiser Nefesh, or Klal Yisrael for Tznius, that's the Bechina of Malchus. Why was Esther Malchus that she was Zayich of Ischus? Sorry, Menu, that was a source, the wellspring of Tznius, the wellspring of Malchus, of standing tall, standing against, going, the, going against the flow, going against the grain of the masses, being Meister Nefesh for Klal Yisrael, being Meister Nefesh for Tznius, the Oivet Hashem, the Bechina of Malchus. The Melech, the Malka, the Bechina of Malchus is, the Melech, the Maral says, is the Melech is Nivdal from the Klal. The Melech stands separate. It's the entity onto its own. It leads the nation it's the heart and soul of the nation. It's the guiding light of the nation. But it, it's, a, it's a nation, so to speak. It's an entity onto its own. There's a melech, and the Hebrew there, it's nichnas ledin. The melech is judged first. So to come into a base, to a din taira, we judge, the melech goes first. So, Poshab Shad is we would understand the melech goes first because you have to give comfort to the melech. Maral says it's not only because of that. It's because the Melech is not judged together with the Tzibor. He's an entity onto his own. He's judged. Then the Tzibor is judged. He's an entity to its own. When the Misrim ran after, chased after Klal Yisrael, when they went out of Mitzrayim and they drowned in the Yamsuf, they drowned. But Parah didn't. Loinishar Behem Echad, ad echad. But echad, ad echad, but echad was nisher, para was nisher. Because the king is an entity to, unto his own. He's not part of the klal. He is the slave of the nation, the heart of the nation, the guiding light of the nation, but he's an entity unto his own because he rises above. 
and it withstands what others do not. Mordechai Tzadik was the Melech. He ruled. He ruled in that time, as the Major said. He had all the Tachsis say Melucha. He wasn't listed as the greatest one in the Sanhedrin. Not before the Nase of Purim, and not after. He was not listed as number one, the number one in Bezdin. He was from the Chashuvim, the fourth, fifth, but not number one. But he was Zaychat because he had the Mida of Malchus. And Mordechai, Lo Yichrev, Lo Yishtachve. Mordechai was the one, Lo Yichrev, Lo Yishtachve. He rose against, he rose against the tide, he rose against the, he rose against the, the pressures. He stood tall. He was Meister Nefesh. He took the risk. He took the chances. Lo Yichrev, Lo Yishtachve. He directed, he guided the nation to be Chayzer B'Tshuva, to be Mekabal the Torah. So he had the meat of Malchus. He had the meat of Malchus. So he was like When the Megillah's Meyaches, Mordechai, it should obviously have the Meyachesim to Shaul and Melech. He's a descendant of Shaul, the first king, who was the king, who was the Melech. And he was a descendant of that king. And Mordechai was a Melech. But it skips over Shaul and Melech because Shaul and Melech was Nichshal in that area. He didn't kill out Agag, the king of the Melech of Amalek. He did not kill out the behemoths of Amalek. He did not withstand the temptations and the pressures of the nation. So in that regard, he fell, Kivyochel, he fell in his duties as a Melech. Whereas Mordechai, Vayichav Leishtachavah, so the Megil is not Miachs at the Shoal, Davka, because in that regard, Mordechai had the Bechina, the attributes of the Melech. Of course, we can't understand any of the, when we talk about the shortcomings, we can't understand any of this. It's well, well beyond what we can fathom. Kivyochel, Kivyochel, that Shola Melech didn't withstand and Mordechai did. That's the Bechina of a Melech, of a Malachim. Mordechai was Zeich and Esther was, she was Zeich. That's the Bechin of Malchus, but we are all B'nai Malachim. As Rosh Shimon says, I call Yisrael B'nai Malachim. All Klal Yisrael are B'nai Malachim. We all have, to a certain extent, the meat of the attributes of Malchus, of Malchus, of royalty. And the Emes of Bechin of Malchus, the Primius of Malchus, the real shayrish of Malchus is being, being able to withstand the rise above, to go against the tide. And we all have that bechina to a certain degree. And it's well known that in Chinuch, to Mechanach children, to Mechanach our children, our grandchildren, there are so many temptations out there. And there are so many pitfalls. And it's so easy to fall. And it's so easy to fall into Yush and despondency. Rabbi Kiva, he wanted to awaken his Talmidim. What does that mean? It means they were sloughing his Talmidim, or went to bed late and they were sleeping. They lived at a time of Yush, at a time when the Romans were trying to wipe out the Tyra, when the Romans were trying to obliter obliterate everything. They lived at a difficult time of Chayshah. Rakiva wanted to awaken them, to awaken them and not to fall prey to the influences of what's around them and the use of what's around them. Awaken them, rise up. Look at Sori Menem. Look at Esther and Malka. Look at the times that they lived in. The Zima of Mitzrayim. The Gzeir of Haman or Rasha. And they withstood. And they rose up. They rose against. Wake them up. Pick ourselves up. We have the kayak. We have the ability to rise above. And the Rabbi Shalom will protect us. And in our times, in our days, we have a different type, but we live also in a time of Rahman of Slan of Zima, of Snus, of lack of Tznius, of a terrible lack of Tznius, where the whole Tselem Elohim is, Rahman of Slan is falling. The Tselem Elohim, the Demus, the dignity 
of Bnei Adam that are Bnei Alakim, the terrible zima and lack of tznius in our time, we have to know we're Bnei Malachim. We're Bnei Malachim, Bnei Malachim. And what's appropriate for others, it's not appropriate for them either. But it's certainly not appropriate for us. And we have the ability to rise above. And we have the ability to withstand and to be the Demus Lakim, the Bnei Avois, Imoyes, the descendants 